centric load here, you know, here, here, but this one is straight. This test setup is very simple. Why? Because we have a nice installed machine in our lab, so we can use this test setup. So this was the proposed screw uh, stiffness test setup. But before that, we wanted to study what are the screws that should be used? Because it's not going to be the sheathing only, it's not going to be the CFS section, not the cross section, not only the slenderness, but the screw is the main connecting element. What type of screws should I use? Right? So I went to a place called GD Metla in Hyderabad. That is like, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, where all your steel things are there. You know, in uh, Chennai, if you go to Manadi area, or Paris corner, that steel traders will be there. Right? Similar to that, there is a place called GD Metla in Hyderabad and I said, hey, you know, just give me all the screws that you are going to supply. So you opened box, one box of screw, two box of screw. I told same Janara, Janagra joke, you give me, you know, one kg of this screw, one kg of this one screw. But I did not mix it though. I took it separately. I studied each one of the screws. Okay. And I studied all these things. Luck would have it. See, the, the, the thought process is beauty is always, you know, not good for taking load. Screws also do the same thing. The, the beautiful screw is the red color thing, right? It has flush, nothing is head, no head is outside. Okay. But the, the beautiful screw is not taking the load. It's only going up to this one point six kN and no displacement also. The ugliest screw is this screw with a big head. Okay, with the rubber washer. The most ugliest screw. It's taking the most amount of load. You see that it is going up to this point, 1.4 kN, and that's a large deformation capacity because ductility is very important. So that is also one more philosophical lesson, okay? So you cannot judge, uh, you know, they say jackfruit, right? Just from my external experience, you cannot. Uh, so this interesting experience, and why this is giving it the highest amount of load is that washer. The washer is actually preventing the pull-through here. So the one that has a washer actually pull through. So we carried out a lot of tests. These are all coming from sweat and blood there. Because a lot of students worked on it for several days together, night and day, and then they produced all these test results, which I am using it to sh share my knowledge with all of you. Okay, so the industry shall use this screw if they want to consider the effect of sheathing. So if you want to consider the effect of sheathing, you need to use a screw that may look ugly, but so be it, as long as it takes the load. So all the tests were carried out with that kind of screw. This is the test setup. And what we can see is that the, when the depth of the member is very high, so the depth is very high for the CFS stud, no? the load is very low. When the depth is very short, the load is very high. Can anyone tell why this? You tend to think that the higher depth will take more load, right? Moment of inertia, when the depth of the beam I section is more, BD cube by 12, D cube by 12 means that the depth is more, right? Right? So we tend to think that it has more moment of inertia and hence it has to take more load. But the test results here is opposite. Counterintuitive. Right? Munutipin Muranarka. Why is that? You understand my point? Why is it giving? We cannot challenge the test result. Test is truth in reality. Truth in reality. Why is it giving that? It's giving because it is not undergoing bending, it is undergoing twisting. So if you have something taller, it is easy to twist because the lever arm distance is very high. You understand? It is not subjected to bending, it is subjected to twisting and hence the shorter member is taking more load than it one. And when it is subjected to twisting, your width is more here. So this minor axis moment of inertia will come to your rescue. Here the width is very small and on top of it the depth is also very high, so that's why the load carrying capacity is low. And this proved our hypothesis and we correlated the small test setup with our big large scale experimental test setup and we saw that every one of them were matching. Here the gypsum sheathing could not inhibit, here also it inhibited, the red color one inhibited because it has more load carrying capacity. The blue color one could not inhibit because of less load carrying capacity. Failure here, no failure here. You see that it has failed. The breakage of the sheathing here, the screws have come out, there it is intact. Okay, so we were able to prove the large scale test setup with simple test setup using an installed machine which is UTM. Okay, we did not stop there, we carried out, I don't want to go into the details, 70 different experiments with a lot of different types of screws, different types of sheathing boards, whatever we could get our hands on, whoever gave it free for us, let me, let me be. Not shameful about it. Whoever gave free specimens, I took it and we did the test. Because we had the lab facilities, we had everything, we had the students, but sometimes consumables were 
more expensive, right? So we did all the tests and we say that there is a perfect correlation between the depth of the member and the stiffness. Okay, so this was a clear correlation. We cal calibrated, we got some experiments and we said rather than KX, KY and KFE, let's ditch all of them together. As I said, it's a one-step process. There is no lateral torsional buckling. It has to be one full thing. So we said KFE, KP. One st stiffness, if you calculate, that is good enough to again with that, that is KP. Okay, so we had these parameters, all these things calibrated. Uh, this is for fiber cement board, plywood, plywood, 6mm, 12mm, particle cement board, 8mm, 12mm. Don't ask me why 8mm, 12mm, that is what is available in the market. So we just took them and we tested it. Okay, then we also combined gypsum with, uh, uh, you know, uh, cold form steel with 12mm. All these things we tested. How to use this equation? Supply should be equal to demand. The seeding supply stiffness is lesser than the stiffness required. Failure will happen like this. It was greater than no failure will happen. That's very simple. So this again we got published in structures. This can be determined using our proposed equation here. This we took advantage of Joseph Yura, who had come up with a nice, uh, uh, nice uh, equations from beam bracing. This is a very very uh, good paper. Okay, Joseph Yura is a person who has spent more than 50 years of his life in studying beam bracing alone. Okay, he's a very well known figure. I had the opportunity to meet him several times and off it on online also. A nice paper, Fundamentals of Beam Bracing by American Iron and Steel Institute, American Institute of Steel Construction. You can see this one. He gave this one for determining the stiffness. We took this one. <coughs> we came up with the, what is a new stiffness approach for direct stiffness strength method. This is all just the details that I told you. If you have the minimum bracing strength and actually available, you compare when you have the availability is greater than this one, no issues. Okay. And we studied this for several methods. We tested it with all these things. The prediction is conservative every one of the times. We studied it for uh, this one. Okay, we just calculated the KFE. This is the predicted stiffness, the bracing stiffness, the predicted stiffness this. This is the bracing stiffness is required. So if this is the requirement, the predictor is this. When this number is greater than this, no failure. Failure will happen. When this number is lesser than this, failure will happen. Okay? Uh, these are our contributions. I am part of the several committees here, like uh, basically in uh, uh, AAC, Cold Form Steel Members Committee. So whatever we do, we don't even, not only give it to Indian people, but we also try to push it for global sustainability. That is our goal. So some of these equations that we have proposed, but it will be a long battle, but we are clear to do though. Okay, so in Indian standard course also we have a lot of, uh, uh, did a lot of work here. IS 800, 800, 801 also. These are all the different committees I am part of it and so we are getting involved in all these things. And we also work on not only on, as I told you, not only on wall panels, but also on built-up connections where this is the current AS equation. Okay, but we have changed this equation to this one to better reflect. If you get all the data here, this is the data that you can see here. It is very well distributed if you change the local stimulus equation based on uh, different things. I don't want to go into the details, but this is, we are working on better points also. And the different connection types also, we have suggested few things here. This will be in the IS801. It will be in draft stage. It will come maybe this year or next year. And the beta beams also, we have given uh, other things also. So, with this one, this is our campus. This is our steel building that I've been talking about. These are our hostel facilities, world class hostel facilities. This is our long 600 acre campus. If you are really interested in pursuing research, okay, you can apply and come and start working with us. You have to be number one, two, or three in your class ranking, and you should be able to do very good research. And uh, we expect people who registered to be uh, full-time direct PhD students if you are interested. Uh, it is a test match, but, uh, but uh, the fruits will be very good. Okay. Questions, comments? I know many of you took pictures, photographs, videos of me. If you want to use it for educational purpose, that is fine. But I don't need publicity, don't put it in Facebook, Twitter, Co, whatever it is. Neither do I like it, nor my wife likes it. Okay, so just uh, for your information.
replacing instead of screws and all. Hey, in civil engineering, okay, and any engineering, 90% of the job, what you do is not engineering. Honestly, I'm telling you, I've worked in industry for several years. It's only about communication. Okay, so you have to talk loud, you have to talk bold, you have to express your thoughts. Huh? Yeah, okay, go ahead. In wall bracing, instead of screws and nuts, can we use any other binding materials? How do you use a binding material? We can use a welding, because binding material may be used for other things, for steel, what is a binding material? We are thinking about... Uh, gel, any other gel type? Gel type, we can think about, that's the chemical bonding you are talking about. What happens is that the durability and the sustainability over a period of time. If I use a screw, I know the depth of the screw, I know the connection, and I test the screw and I can give you a value. So if I say the screw capacity is 1 km for 1 screw, if I put 10 screws, I know 10 km, I can do my hand calculations and prove that this is going to work. Gel, I cannot guarantee that. Because over a period of time, the gel may not be the gel safe gel that we used at the time. It will decay. Unless we do a long term study and understand its effects, we don't want to put our poor Indian citizens as a guinea pig and understand them with them as the life prisoner. Right? So we have to, that's a good idea, let's do that. But let's do that first, get ourselves more data, empower ourselves and do that. Okay, right now I am working on welding. Okay, so we have come up with a new welding technology called uh, cold metal transfer welding where we are trying to weld the two core form steels together. Okay, and then we wanted to study how the weld behavior is going to happen. Okay, so we are doing that, but the gel is something that I am not very comfortable with. See, there are two types of fastener, two types of uh, this thing is there. Whenever you, uh, you know, you do some anchoring mechanisms, one is a mechanical fastener, one is a chemical fastener. Mechanical fastener is your faithful friend, right? The chemical fastener, it may work today, it may not work tomorrow. That's why when I work, when I, when I worked in the U.S., they said belt and suspenders. You know what a belt and suspender is? What a belt and a suspender? See, if your belt has to be there, you put this belt. No, if this belt fails, you have a suspender. If that suspender fails, you have a belt. That means that you have to have an another mechanism to catch your uh, trousers. So that's why it is important to have more than one mechanism because you are putting lights at safety, right? So you can use, say, this chemical technology in addition to the mechanical fastness, but you cannot completely 100% rely on an unproven technology unless it has been proved and they have data to back it up. Okay. Good question. Thanks for the response. Thank you. Yeah, it comes with. So that is, that's the beauty of core form steel. Core form steel comes with 80 to GSM to 200 GSM. So you can tell JSW what GSM you have. Oh, it doesn't require painting for the entire day. No, it does not require painting. That is the beauty. Both from steel can be uh, without uh, painting, you can go for the time. But if you want to use it in very corrosive environment like Wysak or maybe in Chennai or places where there is a corrosive environment, you can, uh, you can say I want to put a GSM or a GSM different from what Once a steel, always a steel. That's the beauty. That's the meaning of sustainability. People talk about sustainability. Green concrete, yellow concrete, white concrete, whatever concrete you can have. But the nature, the very nature of sustainability, go to Webster Dictionary or Oxford Dictionary, you look at the, what is sustainability. Something that can be reused over and over and over again and again without losing its native steel. A 250 MPA steel will be your faithful friend all its life as a 250 MPA steel as long as you protect it against corrosion. That's why he is coming from Bangalore. You know, I know some of the buildings, places at Bangalore, they don't rent by building a marriage hall or a lodge or whatever it is. They don't do. In Bangalore, there are places, very high popular places, they rent the land. The fellow will come and put a PEB shed for five years. 
and he will use it as a factory. At the end of the fifth year, if he does not have business, he will remove the nuts and bolts, take the building with him. He, he will pay only the rent for the land, which means that you are reusing that material. No? The only thing is that the nut uh, will have used its thread. But nut is 5 rupees, 10 rupees you can get. The major steel building is still there. Right? <coughs> so you can take it. The Kirby, for example, is supplying a lot of Anganwadis to northeast of India. With all these small, small schools, right? So one truck, they can take seven Anganwadis. They'll pack it, tie it, and then step one, take this one, put it, step two, bolt it like this. Everything is there. Within one day, they'll complete one Anganwadi. So, by... Huh? Ah, yes. Exactly. <laughs> In our case, you cannot get anything. You cannot get the steel, you cannot, you cannot get the concrete, sand, or whatever it is. Nothing is available. Because if you go travel for 50 kilometers, your stomach will pain. Because it will go like this, suddenly it will go like this, suddenly it will go like this. Every spill. So it's very difficult to transport anything. So you cannot make a good quality concrete there and use it. And especially in our case, of India is zone 5, right? It is prone to seismic, so it's very good for you to use steel as a number one material. So, to answer your question, long answer short, okay, steel is the most sustainable material that is currently given by God plus okay, the most sustainable material that is available. And what kind of thing was you saying? To Coal from steel roofing, usually, see, it's a hot old steel, sometimes comes as rafters, rafters, and then on top of the rafter, you put a pulling section, and on top of the pulling, you put a sheet. So the key here is to connection between the pulling and the rafter, as well as the pulling and the sheet. Okay, a lot of people have studied the connection between the pulling and the sheet, because that is the one, and the path that is a feature that is the one that takes off. But what is equally important is the connection between the rafter and the permit here, the board, which we are studying it right now. Okay, we are studying it, we have designed a test experiments to, uh, you know, static and cyclic, okay, to study that. So, uh, another important thing I want to tell is that wind actually is, uh, you know, earthquake is a fancy item for many people. Whether the earthquake comes in Hyderabad or Chennai or wherever it is, everybody wants to study earthquake because it's fancy, it's beautiful. I'm studying earthquake engineering, this is seismic, right? But the truth here is that more damage is done to our nation by wind than any other natural calamity. Why? Unlike any other nation, we have 7,500 kilometers of coastline. The three major cities, Chennai, Mumbai and Kolkata, which is the most expensive real estate properties in our nation, is there in the coastal zone. Right, but the coastal zone has a season. October, November, it will tell I am going to come. It will also tell I am going to destroy. Earthquake will never tell. You can always cheat an earthquake. Earthquake may come or may not come in the entire life from a structure. It is only a probability. Wind is not a probability, my friends. Wind will come. It's a seasonal effect. But how much money are we pouring into studying the wind effects? Right? So that is also something that I think we need to, as a nation, we need to move towards in a direction where we need to pour the money where the mouth is. Put the food where the mouth is. Thank you. Thank you. You have some questions. How long will the steel switch last? How long, as long as you protect it against corrosion, it will be a faithful thing. Sir, do you think uh, it will... Remove this one, so yeah, I can. Sir, do you think... The, uh, uh, do you think this will... Uh, become more common in future or it will Absolutely become it has to become. It, it is becoming more common. I can tell you that Delhi NCR, five years, six years back, when I used to work with consultants, 90% of the structures was concrete. Okay, Delhi NCR, National Capital Region. Today, okay, the same consultant is telling, sir, I am very happy that collaborated with you on steel structures. Now we are better equipped to do a lot more construction. More than 90% of the construction today in residential in commercial is structural steel because sustainability okay quicker construction cost qualities are shown okay and you get more space the concrete column will be huge if you make a hundred stories you have to five people have to have the entire concrete column right here you have a composite construction you put a box from tata steel and you pour the concrete and become small slender sleek then your most valuable real estate is the ground floor where you can sell it for a shopping complex. If you have a big column, where will put the items? Where you reduce the size of the columns by using a composite construction, 
okay, and you have more store space area, then you can sell it and make more money, right? From a commercial perspective also, it is very good. On top of it, it's a sustainable material. 100 years from now, you don't need it. You can reuse it. Right? Countries like Australia are spending a lot more money on sustainability. Where, you know, what is the total population of Australia? Okay, today, in 19, 2022, some X is the population. 2023 in India, Y is the population. Y minus X is the entire population of Australia. The difference that we add, the delta that we add every year, is the total population of Australia, which is a continent. We are spending huge amount of money on sustainability, circular economy. What are we doing now? For them, it is a fancy thing. They are doing research for what will happen, happen 100 years. Today, we are suffering. So we need more money, more resources, more research to do things that we can reuse the material over a period of time. We need a paradigm shift. Right? So that needs to happen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, you spoke more about the advantages of coal steel. No, sir, what do you think the disadvantage of coal, using coal steel? Disadvantage is you should know how to use it effectively. You should train your steel labor. The fellow who is using the hot old steel should never be allowed to go to the construction site where a coal from steel is used. Because the hot old steel fellow is used to beat and bang, abuse the material, and still hot old steel will obey. Do you understand what I am saying? Coal form steel, steel is not same. Gold is not gold. You go to America, you get 18 karat gold. You get go to here, uh, this thing, uh, whatever, Lalita jewelry, 22 karat gold. You want a biscuit, 24 karat. So you cannot simply say, I want gold. You have to specify what kind of gold you want. Like that, if you want to use the material, coal form steel, you have to train the labor workforce to use it effectively. So if you know the material well, if you know how to use it effectively, that is the major uh, advantage that you can use in coal form steel. And in, in uh, addition to that, uh, transportation has to be taken into consideration. People don't know how to transport a coal form steel. People don't know how to store a coal form steel. If you know how to take care of that, the construction is very well done, I don't think there is a problem. Okay, the only thing is that the mindset has to change. So uh, technically we are correct, but people still want the concrete buildings because they feel a pretty good factor. Right, they wanted to. So when I talked to someone, they said that, okay, uh, if you give a coal farm steel house to a villager, uh, he will draw three lines there and he will use it as a cricket ball also. Will that cricket ball take care of that is a question. Or he will put a 100 kg sack of rice on top of it, will that coal farm steel take care of that? So these are challenges that we are working on. So we wanted to come up with an infill material. So I am working with some of my colleagues who work on fine concrete, lightweight concrete. Where can I use in conjunction with my coal form steel? This will act as some kind of a, uh, uh, add robustness, not necessarily in terms of strength, but sometimes in terms of feel good factor. Emotionally, I feel like it is more like a concrete structure. But in reality, it is a steel structure to give the emotional feelings to fill, I fill it with some lightweight concrete, lightweight concrete is 1, 2 MPA, 3 MPA, but I feel the solid nature. So that is, again, so the challenges are more emotional. So what we need is an awareness. You are telling that we require skilled labors for construction of this. Yeah, skilled labor for everything, uh, more so for coal function. Okay. No, 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 you are about to say something, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, Will that be a disadvantage? It should not be a disadvantage because it will give more labor now. See, still the labor.